G'day everyone, welcome to a new week here on the Aussie Lawn and today it's time for me to start, um, well not start, but it's time for me to uh, give my front lawn a bit of a light scarify. Now, I'm a pretty time poor person so I don't actually get a lot of time, a lot of land here to look after, a lot of different types of grass. Um, for mowing lawn for me is generally about five different mowers so it's not just a quick whip round, it takes a lot of time. So, it does take me a little bit of, I, I do sometimes get, I guess, a bit lazy with certain things and number one would be grooming. Um, I just simply don't get time to do it all that frequently um, just because of the amount of lawn I've got. So look today going to um, do a double scarify on the front lawn. Now there's a couple of different methods you can use. Um, obviously uh, you can use a grooming reel so if you've got a or if you're lucky enough to have a Scott Bonner 45 that's been converted to a grooming machine you could obviously groom your lawn uh, using one of those. I'm, I guess, a bit fortunate I've got one of those and the Scott Bonner 46, which is the dedicated scarifier. So today, I'm going to use it. So it's going to go over once that way, once that way, mow it up with the uh, Honda rotary mower, and then probably just give it a nice fresh cut at the end with the um, Scott Bonner 45, once I'm convinced there's no little bits of sand. Now, as far as heights are concerned, I'm only setting that machine down just above ground level. So I'm not going down crazy deep. I'm not looking to do a major springtime renovation. It's just a bit of a mid-season tickle up. And some of the reasons, some of the reasons why, why am I doing this? So number one, um, the front lawn, even though it's still running on the PGR and I'm, I'm tracking very well on that. So I'm still sitting on my 250 degree growing days. A lot of people are at the 200. I push mine out to the 250 and I'm not um, yet at this stage getting any uh, any surge of growth, so I'm still operating well and truly within the, the, the bounds of the of the product. Now, what's happening with the front lawn is it's just getting a little bit spongy, and particularly if the lawn's wet. So we've just come out of a period of a lot of rain, uh, which leaves that front lawn a little bit softer. So the mower tends to just sink down marginally, and it's at a point now where the lawn looks better about two days after I mow rather than after I mow. So that's a bit of a sign to me that it's time, or probably a little bit too, too far past, to um, just look at thinning out some of that canopy, pulling up some of the dead material and um, going from there. Look, not gonna notice a huge visual impact from a distance up close. You'll see there'll be some lines in there, but look, it's only gonna be for a short period of time. Um, another little thing that's sort of surfaced and it's sort of been mulling over in the back of my mind now for a couple of weeks. Our little TIFF dwarf project, I think it's gonna hit a snag. Now, what do I mean by that? All of my Tiff Dwarf stock, apart from a tiny little patch up the back corner of my yard up here, um, was stuff that was buried with a heap of soil to re-level a bit of ground near the water tank, which I've showed you in the past, and it's managed to push back through, which at the time surprised me. But what's happening to it now is it seems to have mutated. So um, a little quick background on Tiff Dwarf, and I hope I said Dwarf earlier. If I didn't, you'll forgive me. Tiff Dwarf, it's been around since the 60s. Um, and it was actually discovered growing, uh, what was it, is it in a tiff, tiff green? Tiff green um, patch of grass, and it was mutated, self-mutation into this, this dwarf thing, and from obviously from there on it was uh, multiple, um, what do you call it, uh, developed, farmed, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, <laughs> it was favored it was selected and grown and it was then introduced or known as tiff dwarf now done a quick search on the uh, on the old google this morning because i don't have a huge background in tiff dwarf um, and apparently tiff dwarf it's a bit common that it can do that so all of my tiff dwarf at this stage looks to have mutated into something not so dwarf so i'm looking at some ideas at the moment i'm going to sort of see um, I've done some test plots this morning. I'll take you and show you in a minute just over the house here. I've grabbed two questionable plugs that I think are questionable as in not what I want them to be. And I've got two pots there which are what I would consider true to type Tiff Dwarf. Now, I'm gonna see what we can do. I'm gonna leave the stuff that's in the ground here going for the moment because it's not a huge deal to change that. Um, but what I'm gonna do, plan B, I'm gonna see how that goes and then maybe even plan C. I'm gonna have a look around. I'm gonna see what turf farms are out there and someone in the audience might be able to tell me, is there any turf farms out there growing um, ultra dwarf? So um, not Tiff Dwarf, but there's some improved varieties. I gotta research, I think um, uh, Tiff Eagle might be one off the top of my head. Um, so if you know of any turf farms growing ultra dwarf in Australia, obviously, um, chuck it in the comments below because I might actually reach out to one of these guys, see if I can get a roll or a slab and start again. 
but let's just see because I want this project to work I'm, and this was going to be a great little project but it's bloody backfired so uh, the joys of green kipping hey I'll give you a quick look at that then we'll hook in out the front we'll start scarifying um, pick it up um, cylinder mo and go from there here's our little patch of what is still I guess was tiff dwarf and it seems to have uh, mutated into something a little less dwarf or actually a lot less dwarf uh, and when we get up nice and close you'll see these stolons here uh, they're a lot thicker and the uh, the nodes are much more spaced apart than what a true to type tiff dwarf uh, stolon would be so I'm just going to wait and see uh, now here's actually this bit here this scungy little bit here is something I would consider true to type um, it's really tiny compared to my my finger there but when I come over to one of these ones and I put my finger next to it much larger which is not ideal so at the moment this will live to fight another day but I've got a horrible suspicion that all of this here may be the mutated variety which I don't really really want well, I guess while we're here, we'll, do, we'll just do a quick update on what's been happening with this putting green since the last last episode. I have started now a light uh, spoon feeding fertilizer program. So uh, I'm using a uh, soluble fertilizer called NutriFeed 23. Now it was a fertilizer that I actually used as a greenkeeper and actually as an apprentice on our greens way back in the day. So just doing a spoon feeding of that, working out on 500 grams per 100 square meters uh, and I'm actually using there you'll see a um, old sea salt bottle it's just uh, a nice way of getting that stuff out and then I don't have to water it in if like I would if I perhaps used a backpack sprayer so it's got a nice dilution rate we can go with it that way quite comfortably and I also tip in uh, a cup of the seaweed secrets from the plant doctor just for good measure so look it'll start to actually pick up really nicely now with those spoon feedings I'll probably give it a spoon feed every fortnight and we'll get some color back into this uh, pretty swiftly I'd imagine uh, and also this morning I put a little bit of sand around for the or ant sand I think it is uh, for the funnel ants now as I said I've still got that chemical that bottle of Zeus that I've yet to put out um, but I've got that ant sand it was open I was just wandering around this morning so I just sprinkled a bit around to see what sort of effect we get with that right so you'll see here uh, and this has been cut for a couple of days now and although it's not growing it still just gets a little bit unkept in the sense that I haven't been on top of the grooming program and you'll see there's just lighter areas uh, there's one there and um, yeah so there's just some areas which are starting to say hey we need a bit more attention um, so still nice and short uh, nice and fine PGR doing its job well but we'll just give it a touch up double scarify pick it up with the mower run the cylinder mower over it and she'll be ready to roll again looking sweet <laughs> of passes now and already I can tell it's probably not quite deep enough um, I'm not trying to go crazy but at the same time I want it to do something so we're just going to um, just to knock it down just a little tiny bit uh, you would have noticed the first few runs over here uh, it's probably about the depth I was chasing now what's changed there is because this area here domes down right so it domes down a little bit by that doing that it actually will be cutting a bit deeper because it's riding on a high and a low the middle is a bit um, getting a bit more blade action so I'm gonna drop it down a little bit because as I said as we come down this way um, you can't actually see 
really too much at all. So we'll knock him down a tiny bit. We went over that two directions, as I said earlier. Um, not a huge amount of grass there, but that was not actually the plan. We just wanted to take away some of that thatch that's hiding in that profile of grass. I get too drunk and too scared and a few things have been happening. Um, since we started this episode. First thing is, this is the second time I've used a new camera. So uh, Santa Claus was kind enough to get me a proper camera. So last week's episode was a little bit dark. I'm still trying to get a hang of the settings. Um, and the second thing, I've noticed the battery life on this thing is really, really short. So uh, of course, halfway through filming this, the batteries went dead and old clown pants here uh, had two other batteries and they're both flat. So. Unfortunately, while I was charging, what I ended up doing was I actually then went over this with the grooming reel in that other Scott Bonner 45, um, and it pulled out a heap, a heap of dead material, um, and really, really made this thing um, transform. So, what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna break and have something to eat. It's pretty warm here now, it's, I don't know, mid 30s. Um, gotta come back tonight and chuck out some fertilizer, and depending on the wind, uh, if it's not too windy, I'll put out some of the, uh, Hydrolink Advance, the soil wetter, and um, give that a treat, give that a session with this. Now, this has come up really well, it looks really sharp. Um, it's scalped a little bit, but not too bad, about what I expected to see. Uh, but again, with the feed, we've got a little bit more rain coming over the weekend, so that should help things um, recover nicely. And then also, just a quick reminder again, if you guys were after any hats or shirts, I've got the truckers caps and the polo shirts now available. Um, as I said before, last episode, the truckers caps are $30 and the shirts are $60 plus postage, and that's postage within Australia or overseas. Anyway guys, look, I'm gonna go and have some food. I'll see you back here this afternoon. Take it easy. <laughs> 